Oh, it's great to everybody back again for our, our next installment of the biweekly webinar. Hey, this one uh, is a, a special treat for me, and I think it's going to answer a lot of questions that I know that I get within this role and, and the things that have been asked. And so when people ask about coaching license and coaching courses, I thought, man, what a better way to, to address this topic than to find the guy that leads the C license or C license uh, courses himself. And I've had the pleasure to, to actually been in our C educator course right now, and I will tell you what. You guys are in for a special treat because this guy is a wealth of knowledge and is the way he approaches teaching is his second to none. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Peter McGahey. Right now, he's the teaching assistant professor at West Virginia University. He's also the technical leader for the C license course for U.S. soccer. And with that being said, hey, thank you so much for being a part of this thing. And thanks for coming to, to North Texas to, to share your views and, and give us insight upon this amazing course that you, you've taken the lead on. Awesome. Warren, I really appreciate uh, you having me, and I'm really excited about our conversation today. No, it's great. And I thought, you know, to kind of give a background, because I know that we all have a, a place we come from, and I think everybody's really kind of interested is, how did you go from where you started to end up being the technical leader for U.S. soccer for the C course? And it kind of gives like a little history, a little background, if you don't mind, so we can kind of kind of look into you and see see how it got here. Um, I, I would share with you is it's uh... – uh, an interesting journey. I think the place the the first answer would be is uh, I packed boxes and I made a lot of new friends along the way. So I would share is is that my uh, coaching journey started much the same way as a lot of coaches did. They, you've played a little bit. You serve your local club. I got when I when as I finished my college career, I got out of coaching. Um, I was definitely retirement was definitely my. my path as a player. So I just moved into coaching, started coaching high school, did ODP in Colorado. I was very fortunate um, at the time to have a mentor, Paul Dreesen at the Denver Soccer Club, who sort of brought me on board and said, hey, Peter, are you interested in coaching? Yes, great. And he just really took me under his wing and helped me learn a lot about the game, learn a lot about coaching. And at that moment, I was in sort of my very first coach educator role where I was helping other coaches learn about learn about coaching. Um, I thought I knew a lot then. Um, and I, as I've come to realize, I knew very little. So um, I was uh, just fortunate to be around good people. Then I was able to take a journey and a step down to, down to near your neck of the woods. Um, I was uh, the state director of coaching in Oklahoma uh, for four years. Right. And that was a really a fascinating experience. And that was a place that really immersed me in the concept of technical leadership, uh, coaching development. And it was a really formative experience for me. And then as my, my kids were born and my, my, my parents were getting a little bit older, I felt like I needed to get back a little bit closer to the game. So I then, we relocated the family back to Colorado and I started to do more coaching, technical leadership at the club. And then I got a little bit into uh, college coaching. That was a place where I was able to grow my craft as a coach. And then throughout that time, I was always teaching, teaching a little bit of what used to be the F's, used to be the E's, used to be the D's. And then during my my path of college coaching, I was continuing to coach educate. So then as my college coaching career was wrapping up, um, basically it was a place of where I had reached the end of my coaching journey in terms of college coaching, I was like, okay, where's my next path? So I've always been drawn to education. I've always helped people. I really love the idea of teaching. So I was able to move into the assistant professor role at West Virginia University, where I'm the good fortune has me teaching sport coaching. So I teach Oh, wow. coaching on a on a daily basis at the at the at the university at the university level which then connects directly with where i am now at uh us soccer as the technical lead for the c license course of looking after the c license course serving in that capacity and then serving as a coach educator and coach educator developer for uh for coaches all across the country so it's been a winding journey but it's landed me really in a good place warren where i'm able to fulfill my own personal mission of the idea of helping others discover and become the best versions of themselves oh that's awesome you know it's kind of funny it stuck out to me in your, in your story it's like almost, almost the same as mine shouldn't you have great mentors that bring you in start off uh, just teaching some courses and growing as you're going on and so one thing i'd like to kind of get your thoughts on 
Do you see the same thing across the board with those, some of the other educators you've come in contact with? I mean, how how often is it occurring that you may have some young person that's maybe starting their journey that could follow the path that either yourself or myself or others have done? Well, I would share with you is the interesting side story for me is that how important our mentors are. And I would share two additional ones. One is, is that when I was the state director of coaching in Oklahoma, I ran across a gentleman named Dr. Peter Piero and Dr. Peter Piero and I have written a couple of books together, but Peter was really formative about my viewing myself as an educator and as a developer and really helping me to almost discover strengths in myself that I didn't know. And then the second piece actually has a connection with North Texas. So many years ago, Dave Simeon was the director of coaching education for North Texas. So that's a history lesson for some of us out there. Well, the interesting connection for me and Dave, as it relates to the C license course where I am, Dave was my C license coach educator many moons ago. And Dave wow. was a transformative person for me in my own professional journey because the C license at the time really sort of acknowledged that how, where my journey had come and how much further my coaching journey had to go. And Dave has always been a real connection and a real powerful mentor in my, in, in my, on my, on my coaching journey. And it goes back to when I was a far younger coach uh, taking the C license course from him at uh, San Diego state university. So it was really, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a small soccer world Warren for sure. Oh, 100%, because it's funny, because the reason why I'm maybe sitting in this chair right now is because of Dave Simeon at the time that he took me under his wing when I first started coaching high school. And so like, it's beautiful. He actually did our B, my B course coming into it. So that's funny, the parallels that come out and the people that had an impact. And so but that being said, kind of took off that is it as you talk about the C license when you had back under, under Dave, because I know it's been way different. How has it progressed over time from the time that you got your C? Because I know I think at that time went it over like a 10-day period of time that we went in and had the residential to now where it's grown to what it is now. And with that, I'll kind of leave it with you. So I think the, the, the history of the course is, 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 you, is unique, right? I would just share is, is I took my C license so long ago that we walked uphill both ways to the cafeteria. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, it, and that, that's a true story where the field was in, at San Diego State University it was a big downhill and a big uphill and a big downhill and a big uphill. So we were able to get our extra steps in during our nine day course. I think it's a place where our courses have evolved in terms of what used to happen would be a nine day, really immersive experience in terms of a lot of playing, a lot of being a player, learning how to coach along the way where our courses now have really started to capitalize on some of the unique experiences that the world has gone through over the last several years, but really sort of embracing technology, embracing accessibility, embracing inclusivity, the idea that now we're trying to make our courses more accessible to more people. So we're able to capitalize on the online environment, capitalize on the asynchronous environment and be able to grow from there. No, I love it. And just looking at the, the times we talk about, you know, every week you're going in and, and over a period of what is it? So overall smash and course, but it's rather built over a time period. What are the advantages that you think about the length of time as opposed to that old nine day? Um, I th I think the reality is, is that the, the, the length of time in terms of like the C course now is over 16 weeks. I think the opportunity for the adult learner and the C license course to now meet uh, student coaches where they are is has been enhanced from that nine day format. That nine day format is so intense and time away from work and time away from family, et cetera. That's really hard some for some adult learners. And what we're able to do is now meet learners where they are and deliver an experience where they're able to learn in their context within the context of the course. Right, and to kind of to play off that a bit too, because I, I think about this weekend when I went to Odessa and had the grassroots courses, it's really nerve wracking for that coach to get in front of his, first of all, get in front of your peers, and then coach kids, you have no idea who they are. And so I think one of the advantages just on my perspective is that when they do the video sessions, they're actually using kids that they know, the kids that they work with. And I wonder if that doesn't add a little bit to the, I don't know, 
the more effectiveness of the actual course now as well. I don't know what your thoughts are towards that. Yeah, I think Warren, for me, I think it's a place of where when when individuals are working in their own environment, when our student coaches in the course setting are conducting their videos in their own environment, it's their context, it's their team, it's players that they're familiar with. That really helps, I think, student coaches allow their natural qualities and natural competencies to emerge more because it's players that they're more familiar with. And I think what that allows us to do is, is that takes the content that they learn about in the course and make that more transferable because they're applying it throughout the course immediately in their own environment. Well, that's a ton of sense. And also not having to, to do it in front of peers so much as if you're learning with that one coach educator, the one, one student and a team, now feedback isn't in front of peers. It's more directed individually towards that individual candidate and their individual needs. And that's something I thought that's been really powerful going through this process. No, I, I appreciate that. I think it's a place where the technology with videotaping allows us to create a little bit of a distance with some of that. Like, again, people feeling like that they're on a stage. Some of student coaches really like that and they love to coach in front of lots of people. And some people really pr prefer, hey, I'm just coaching my team in my park on this day, that's that's the environment that I'm most comfortable. And I think sometimes when we have that balance between a little bit of uh, discomfort and a little bit of comfort, then we're able to now really have the the student coaches share their share share their knowledge and share their competencies with us on their videos the best they can. Fair enough. And just to, to kind of go ahead, so I know that some people watching this uh, later on in on YouTube may have questions as to well. How the heck do I get get to the C license? So what's the the process of, you know, through U.S. soccer to be able to actually enroll in the course? And so what's the lead up to that? I, I think that there's it's twofold. One, I would encourage everyone to look at education and growth as their own journey and their own process. I know if I look back on my um, coaching education journey, there were times where I was in a real rush where I felt like I had to go super fast and just go, 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 go. And I would say that that, that yellow, I would, I would offer a little bit of wisdom of just saying, Hey, a, a yellow light and going at your own pace is most appropriate. So what we're, what we have at us soccer is you have our grassroots courses where it's an introduction within certain different playing formats and different age of players, sort of really, let's call it U12 and below is going to be our grassroots co courses. And they're going to have different places where the coaches, aspiring student coaches are going to be able to select their context and where they want to learn based on their current environment. There are going to be a series of courses that they're going to need to take um, in order to then move on to the D license course. The D license course is again going to be within that U12 context and it's sort of going to be the the culmination and a combined course of those grassroots courses of working with U, U12 players with a real focus on U10s and U12s. Um, there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of that content and information in the D license course. And then the D license course are going to go through uh, an, an immersive experience where they're going to have asynchronous videos, synchronous meetings, some in-person meetings where they're going to get to work on their uh, competencies as a coach. And then at the end of the D license course, Warren, uh, for the student coaches that achieve that license, there's a waiting period of a six months. So then then at, after six months, then they can move on and apply for their C license course and become a student coach in the C license. Oh, awesome. And so the next thing, because I know I get this asked a lot, is what would be the advantages of having a C license? So I know that you know, there's different levels of coaches. They're all coming from different paths, whether it be a college coach or, you know, a, a professional coach, all the way down to the, the recreational coach that, that wants to expand on their knowledge and to be able to develop a, an 11 v 11 team that, that, you know, that's developmentally sound that really produces well for their athletes that they, they address or that are in front of them. I think the benefit of the C license co course, Warren, is, or the C license is a couple fold. I think there's going to be certain organizations that may have licensing requirements where the C license becomes a requirement to coach at that level. And I think that that's a place of where those types of requirements are really quite, um, really quite powerful. 
um, because those are just things that now we're able to say as the coach who has those kind of qualifications, we know they meet some minimum competencies to coach players at a certain level. So I think that that's one reason why the coaches would want to have that continua continual education. I think the other places, the benefit of the C licenses is the C licenses is the context of the C license courses, as you mentioned, is it's the 11 v 11. So it's an introduction to the 11 v 11 game within the context of U13 through U17, but with the main real focus on U13 through U17. So it's a really broad, broad context, of course, because we're really looking at players in the participation environment. So it's a place where coaches who want to expand their knowledge, grow their knowledge, and uh, learn about the 11 v 11 format, the C license course is uh, the place that it's all going to all come together. The C license course happens to be my one of my favorite courses along our pathway, because Warren, I think it's a place where it's a really interesting intersection for coaches on their educational journey. For some of the coaches that come in, it's their culminating course. Some of the courses who are going to be working in certain environments, the C license course may be their final course, just in terms of their coaching journey, the age of their players, or the context that they're working in. For others, the C license course is the first step into sort of the national courses, which is the C, B, A, A youth or A senior, and then the pro environment. And the C license would be a catalyst for that. So it's a really, we get to see everybody so the coaches that are looking that are really excited to be the high school coach in a rural community who wants to grow to the to the coach who's saying i really think i want to be a professional coach and do this for my career they all come together at the c license course and we all get to welcome them as student coaches in in our learning environment that's awesome and i really like the way you connected the grassroots all the way through the a um as you start to look at it what can they expect so as far as workload requirements, and then what do they need to have coming into a C course? So in order for a, a coach to be prepared and ready to go, they've decided they've done it, they've done their D, they've done the grassroots, and now they're coming to a C course. Is there any kind of advice you'd have for that coach before they actually start the journey? Because I know it is quite intensive. I think that there's two, I think that there's a couple of things that I would that I would share is that I think what they could expect is they could expect asynchronous videos synchronous meetings, one-on-one -on -one meeting with their coach educators, communities of practice where they're meeting with the other co other student coaches in their, in their course, learning about leading the team, leading the player. There are also going to be environments where they're talking about performance analysis and coaching games. They're going to talk a lot about in the C course about the idea about coaching training sessions. The C license course is the, the workload is centered around um, planning for one week. Okay. So as they come into the course, I think that they can expect to put several hours a week into the course um, over a 16-week period. They can expect to have one four-day in-person experience, and that's going to happen at some point in month two in the course. So they'll be together for a month, then they'll come together for four days in month two, and then they'll go back to work in that independent uh in what I would call as an independent hybrid environment, hybrid where they're doing some synchronous work and some asynchronous work as the as the course closes. What I think is most important for um, coaches to have and be ready for and to be expecting is you really need in the C license course to have the appropriate age team throughout the course. So it's a place of where is, is that you would need access to your U13 through U, U16 participation based team throughout the, throughout the course. So that would be a, a, a team that would be practicing at least twice a week. That, that team is where your context would be grounded in through the course. So accessibility to a team is critical. And then the last two, I think, are this is it's a place of where as you come into a, a formal learning environment, the idea of how do you take ownership of your own learning of what are my what are my goals when i get into the course what do i want to learn what am i curious about because that curiosity and that ownership helps engage you as a learner and then the last one is this idea is, is how do you just approach this uh learning experience with a growth mindset people love to talk about or an open mind i read something yesterday that a little humility and an open mind 
learning is always possible. And I think that that would be, those would be the three things that would be most important as they come into the C license course. Age appropriate team, ready for your own learning goals and your learn own intentions, and then a real open mind and growth mindset. I got it. love it because that's actually what I was, I was thinking of when you're talking about that to kind of flip it to the, the other side and say, what are the things you've seen that that kept candidates in the past not being successful? And I think if you address those three things, maybe it's just the opposite of those same three things, but I'll let you kind of. I, I think it's a place that. where I think there's always a place sometimes as learners where it, it, the idea that I think some people can come into the courses when they just expect us to assess them. And they don't really want to learn. I think that that's always hard. Um, I think that sometimes is 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 that what I would share is is that I've seen the student coaches who come in and haven't recognized the barriers that they have within their life, and it may not be the right time for this learning experience. Life happens to all of us, Warren. Right? It happens to all of us. Sometimes it's just not the right time. That would be that would be one of the barriers that I've seen. And I think I also think it's a place of where. The, the challenge, as I mentioned before, on sort of the mad, the the dash of more education faster without sort of taking some time to make sure that I have um, a good understanding about the game of soccer as a whole. And I have some level of coaching experience before I come into the course. I think that's a place of where sometimes that the C license course is when the coach has a limited experience in the 11 v 11 game. Sometimes that that can pose challenges when they when they when they begin the course. Gotcha. No, I love it. And then there's like one the, the last I think your third point was was on kind of humility, you know. And one thing just noticing courses from the past that I've been involved in and how powerful or how big a deal that really is to come in with that humble mindset, not let the ego get in the way, and to really be open to what happens. Yeah, and I think it's a place of where we're really as a as a as, as a as U.S. soccer right now really trying to make sure that our courses are inclusive and accessible and recognizing that sometimes as we as educators have to be vulnerable and humble as well. Mm -hmm. Like I look at my, when anytime that I'm fortunate enough to be around again, educators like you, the idea about to be in a course, I know that I'm always going to be learning alongside my student coaches. And the idea is, is that that's a place where embracing that learning is really important. And to learn, we all have to be humble. We all have to be vulnerable. And I think it's a place where as people come into the C course, I really hope that that's the environment that our coach educators are creating for them is that we're welcoming them, that we're supporting them, that we're going to have high standards and we're going to help them along the way to meet, meet the minimum competencies that are required in the course. Well, and that's kind of the beauty of the group that at least I'm blessed to work with right now within the educator group that I've got, is that seems to be the case where everybody comes in with that open mind. I think you've got a really good set of, of people coming through right now. Yeah, no, we're really, I'm really, as I say, Warren, you get to be really grateful to, to work with such good people. Oh, yeah. No, I'm lucky. Now, the last thing I was kind of thinking is that, you know, it's progressed back from the, the days when it was nine days, all intensive, everybody screaming and barking at you the whole time to where now it's kind of more, more of an educator based where it's actually a learning environment. Where do you see this thing going in the future? How do you think any changes that might be coming? I think it's a place where we're always continuing to say, how are we focusing on if, if our vision as a U.S. soccer coach education department is, is to have our, to have an opportunity for everybody to have access to education that helps them reach their potential. That's what we're driving for. That's what we're looking for. That's the vision that we're aspiring for in the future. That could be the grassroots coach in rural Texas. It could be the uh, the coach in in West Virginia. The idea about what coaches who want to reach their potential and being able to provide platforms for them to grow their, what I would say, their craft of coaching to be able to help them and help their players uh reach their potential what that allows us to do then is is it allows us to become and help the sport become the preeminent sport across the country is the idea is is that we're really trying as a coach education department to focus on the learner and their potential and we're really trying to aim high with what we're doing where does it go Warren, like I got, I got, I, uh, as you could imagine, we have a few, <laughs> a few crystal balls and we can't let too many secrets out of the, out of the bag. But I think it's a place where we're always trying to say, how are we trying to make our courses more accessible, more inclusive, be able to meet more people with where they are, take advantage of technology 
in terms of being able to deliver things with meeting people where they're at. I think that the idea of integration of technology and to recognize the importance of the interpersonal relationships that are built between coach educators and student coaches, what some of my coaching colleagues call on the grass, like on the field, making it about the game is really where some of those things I think are where sort of the cor courses will craft to. Does that mean some different uh, learning environments asynchronously with some more time or different time on the field? Probably, does that mean that you capitalize on technology and people watch field sessions from the comfort of their own home that are happening in other places? I think those are some things that we are, we're absolutely looking to take advantage of those things to be able to get that education accessible to as many people as possible. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm glad I asked that question. You know, and as I start to look at, and the last question I think I have before we open it up for, for everybody else on the call, so I was thinking, you know, how does it fit into the overall plan of U.S. soccer in general? Because I know that, like you said, tried to grow the game as a preeminent sport in the nation. How does U.S. soccer view coach education as a, as a part of that overall plan? Better environments equal better players and better coaches equal better environments. Perfect. <laughs> I think with that, that's pretty dang concise, and I, I appreciate you taking the, the time to do it. But with that, uh, anybody else have any any questions? I said you're not going to get a better time. Go ahead. You've got it. I have a quick question. Uh, well, first, thank you very much for the time and this opportunity to be here. Um, I have a question in regards of how is the education here in America uh, being up to date with what uh, the UEFA is doing with their courses, what it, with the common ball, what they're doing. I mean, yes, the U.S. is about to have an inflection of soccer that, uh, I mean, few countries can have in a, in, a, in a lapse of three years, having the Copa America, having the Women's Gold Cup right now, uh, uh, Club World Cup coming up, and the FIFA World Cup in 26. How is it that... Um, these courses, these licenses are being prepared or being um, projected to be at the level of a web app course or the common book course that is also really important as well. Mario, I appreciate your question. And the hope would have that we would also stack on the end of that, we'd stack the Women's World Cup too. That you'd have the Women's World Cup to follow that next, the following with that. So we hope we get that bit as well. Mario, the piece that one of the exciting pieces with our courses is, is I think it's a place under our director of coaching education, Didier Chamberon, is, is that we're really partnering and working really closely with FIFA and recognizing it's a worldwide game. I think our courses are taking advantage of all of that knowledge and all of that expertise to really now focusing on the learning of our student coaches. One of the exciting pieces that's happening that's sort of under development that our courses have gone through on what we like to call an evolution and update over the last several years is we're moving in the direction of a of joining a CONCACAF convention as it relates to coaching education so that our coaching education licenses would be recognized all throughout CONCACAF and would be on that direct path with FIFA. And that is very similar to what you see in the other, in the other, in the other confederations in terms of UEFA or Combo Bowl, as you mentioned, those are affiliated in, in, in coaching conventions and it's all connected all the way back up to FIFA. So we're really excited about how the, our courses now are in line to move us into that CONCACAF convention over the next couple of years. That's a great question. Thank you for your answer. It was really complete and I really enjoy it. Um, I am a coach that well, I've been coaching for a while, like around seven years now in youth summer camps and as well in college level, but I'm just starting to get into, okay, it's time to get the certificates. It's time to get all the licenses as well. So I'm even having like, I'm heading to Houston now in March to take the, to be able to finalize the requirements of the grassroots in order to be able to start with the D uh, license. So um, that's why I wanted to, get in touch on that and I'm international I'm from Colombia so that's why I was okay I have knowledge of how the common ball works down there but let's get into how it's uh the CONCACAF getting set up for um success that would be great I really appreciate that it sounds like your your coaching journey is on on the right track well and to, to that Alejandro please reach out to me at, at warren at ntxsoccer.org and 
and I'll be happy to help you with getting the grassroots stuff set up as well as getting the D courses, but we'll see if we can't get you in here with us pretty quick with that. But yeah, please use me as a resource as well at any time you need, and I'm here for you because that's kind of what we're, what we're here about. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, I started my, my company, Hikari Lead Training, about a year ago, and I was in West Texas. Um, oh. But right now, I moved into the Dallas Fort Worth area. So that's where I am right now. And that's um, uh, like getting in contact with clubs, with this thing. Uh, they were like, okay, now it's time for you to start getting your, your licenses. Uh, a couple of years ago, like around 2018, I got my 4B4 grassroots course and oh, then I online, online. But um, now that they're requiring to have the in-persons in the, in the Houston one, I'm going to do the 9B9 and 11B11 with my fiance that I'm also getting her into the coaching as well. She was a great soccer player, but we're getting uh, prepared to be able to be successful in the coaching environment. Oh, that is awesome. Where in West Texas were you, man? Uh, yeah, so I was coaching at Wayland Baptist University. That's in Plainview. Really yes. close. Oh, yeah. No, I'm familiar with Yeah, because I actually was in Midland forever. Oh, so right. I know exactly where that is. That's awesome. That's a great place. So, yeah, no, so I appreciate it. Over there, I got a, a little bit of experience coaching in the college level, and it was an experience that I want to keep keep pursuing at some point. Perfect. Well, I'll tell you what, please reach out to me once we get off this call. And like I said, I, I will definitely help out, especially if you're in the Metroplex. We've got all kinds of resources and all kinds of clinics going on just to help you out, as well as your fiance. And then congratulations, by the way, on that. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. I really enjoy it. Peter, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and your path. It has been really enlightening and, well, really motivating for us that we are like young coaches getting into this ladder of getting licenses is really motivating oh awesome well thank you I very much I, I appreciate that thank you all right do you have anything else to before we close this thing out or any other thoughts no warren yeah. i think i think as you mentioned i think it's a place like again with north texas soccer and coaching education and warren in the role as the director as the director these are really important resources for us to utilize again with making just coaching education more accessible and more inclusive all across the country to utilize the resources to utilize the pe people who can support us because it circles back to that warren as if you think about our common stories about as you mentioned before about the mentors and the people who have connected to us and have have uh have sort of inspired us to continue our coaching education journey. It's really important to recognize that as we ask for help, as we look for continuing education, we're going to meet those people who are going to help us guide us and support us on our, on our paths. And I know that you are, you're really committed to doing that for your coaches in North Texas and all across the country. So I really appreciate uh, your efforts and I really appreciate you having me on today. Well, sure. Thank you. And, you know, one thing that kind of stood out to me through the conversation is that when I was growing up, we used to go camping all the time. And there was one one lesson that my uncle really put forward is always leave the, the campsite better than you found it. And I really think through your work, through U.S. soccer, you're actually living that that dream as well, because I know there's so many campsites you've already left and you've made it so much better. And I want to take you know, so I can just say thank you very much for the time you put into it. And we look forward to, to future endeavors and seeing you here pretty quick. Thank awesome. You, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Warren. And with that, I'll go and close up uh, this, this rendition of our bi-weekly webinar. Uh, we've got another one coming up here pretty quick with Janae with uh, U.S. Soccer. She's actually going to go over the grassroots portion of this thing. So I'm really excited, and I look forward to seeing everybody on, and, and we'll continue going. Thank you very much.